I thought we might look together today at uh, the account that Mark gives us of the uh, healing of blind Bartimaeus and to draw some parallels, really, for, from that story with our condition. I, I think we'd agree, wouldn't we, with the world's in a mess, the church is in a mess. And if we're honest uh, about ourselves, we're all in a mess as well, aren't we? Um but, but this uh, account of the encounter of Bartimaeus with Jesus, I think, has some lessons for us. I'd like to read it to you from, from uh, Mark chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 46. Uh, and they came to Jericho. And as he, that is Jesus, was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and say Jesus son of David have mercy on me and many rebuked him telling him to be silent but he cried out all the more son of David have mercy on me and Jesus stopped and said call him and they called the blind man saying to him Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. I want to think really uh, about a, a number of things relating to this. Mark uh, not only tells us what his name was, but he he repeats it, doesn't he? He, he doesn't just say his name was Bartimaeus. He said he was the son of, of Timaeus. Now, I, I'm no, no Greek scholar, so I use, a, I use a Bible app. But the word, the name Bartimaeus, although it's in, there in Latin in, in the, the text, is apparently a, a name of Chaldee origin. Uh, and uh, Chaldee and Hebrew are from the same language group. But but if you uh, uh, know anything about dialects, you know that uh, things can mean something quite different or at least sound quite different. Uh, if you, Even if you're speaking the same language, if you come from a different place, um, I, I must admit I was rather naughtily reminded of... Uh, um, oh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name now. The, the fellow who did uh, um, a, a series of uh, comical sketches uh, on on the, the series of, of programmes that was on BBC television years and years ago about learning to speak Italian. Uh, it was called Parliamo Italiano. Well, he did Parliamo Glasgow. And uh, the, the, you could actually hear the words coming out that could not make a sense, any sense at all, of what was being said. Um, but here is Bartimaeus. His name has a meaning. Perhaps in the Chaldee it didn't have a, a significant meaning. But in the Hebrew it sounds like the son of filth or uncleanness. Here is a man who is blind with a name that describes his condition. Are we not, uh, as individuals and as churches and as a world, in such a state? Th this is a name that could be written above us, isn't it? His condition was that he was blind. He couldn't see. But the ESV translates it correctly when he says that Bartimaeus asked to recover his sight. He had seen once. He'd seen wonderful things once. He knew what it was to see. And yet, Lord, now, look, now he was blind. He knew he was blind. He perhaps suspected that he was filthy, but he couldn't see his uncleanness. He couldn't see his filth because he was blind. And yet others around him quite clearly referred to him as a, a son of filth. Um, they regarded him with little, little uh, regard. They had great contempt for him, really, considering the way they responded to his pleas. 
his situation then was that he was blind, he was unaware of his condition. And he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Now, his response to the, well, the fact, his inquiry as to what was going on when he was told that Jesus was passing by is interesting because he doesn't call out and say, Rabbi, or Jesus, have mercy on me. He refers to him as the son of David. Here is a man who has faith. He has a knowledge of who Jesus truly is. And yet he's a man who's in a desperate condition. One of the things that marks this man's uh, response to Jesus passing by is his importunity, isn't it? I wonder if we feel ourselves in, in, in that state too today. We, we don't see the things that we used to see. We've heard of them by the hearing of the ear. We know the things that God can do, but we don't see them in our day. Do we have that real recognition that, that we need the intervention of God? I'm sure most of us here do. Why would we meet week after week and call on the Lord for a, a time of reviving and refreshing if we didn't know that there was something missing? There is something missing, isn't there, from our lives and from the lives of our churches. There's definitely something missing in the life of our nation, a knowledge of God, a recognition of him and what he can do. Well, he, would, he called out. He wanted Jesus to stop and to help him. He asked for mercy. Now, I've always loved this passage since I heard Sidney Lawrence preach on it once. And the title of his, his sermon was Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth Passes By and Jesus Stood Still. It's such a, a, a lovely conjunction of two ideas, isn't it? And here is Jesus passing by, and yet in response to this call for mercy, Jesus stood still. What it speaks of, of the compassion and the understanding and the willingness of our Lord to hear our cries when we call upon him. We must continue, mustn't we, to pray and to plead for God's intervention on our behalf. Is there truly, I wonder in our churches, a desire to see a moving of God's Holy Spirit? Is there truly a desire to recognise our blindness, to recognise the things that we can't see, that once our forebears used to see in terms of the moving of God amongst us? But he was told, wasn't he, that he could, he could come. Jesus said, call him. And the crowd around him said, oh, take courage, he's calling you. And his response was to cast off his coat. Well, one of the points that Sidney Lawrence made in his sermon was that this man was so urgently concerned about his condition that he wouldn't want any impediment to hold him back. There are many impediments, aren't there? I think one of the biggest impediments in the, the so-called Christian faith is the cloak of religion, the garment of religion. And it can infect us, can't it, as evangelicals? Uh, we can be so content with uh, our regular meetings, uh, being instructed by receiving doctrine, by knowing about our faith, about our Saviour. And yet what we need is to know him, isn't it? We need an experience of a touch from him. And that's what Bartimaeus wanted. So what Bartimaeus sought and what Bartimaeus was given. So as we come to prayer, I trust that we will be encouraged to seek, to acknowledge the fact that we need to call upon him. We are those who are desperately in need of a sight of our Lord Jesus again. A hymn that... Uh, was written actually at a time when I was uh, in college uh, um, by Vernon Hyam, expresses, I think, what we should desire. And I think this hymn was written at a time when Vernon was in hospital, uh, recovering from uh, a, quite a serious uh, breathing problem and was, near, uh, was, was thought 
to be close to death. But but this hymn, to me, it sort of uh, it, it encapsulates what what it is that we want to see. He says this: I saw a new vision of Jesus, a view I had not seen here before, beholding in glory so wondrous, with beauty I had to adore. I stood on the shores of my weakness, and gazed at the brink of such fear. "'Twas then that I saw him in newness, regarding him fair and so dear. We need, don't we, a new vision of Jesus, a new love for him, a greater love for him. We need to see ourselves. Um, interesting, isn't it, that uh, Rabbi Burns's poem to a louse, which is also an illustration of the way in which dialect can <laughs> make something difficult to understand sometimes. Uh, it expresses this. He, he says, doesn't he? Right. It, it's only the last stanza, I think, that people know of, the, of this poem of Robbie Burns's. Oh, what some power the gift he give us to see ourselves as others see us. It would free money a blunder free us and foolish notion. What airs in... Oh, dear, I can't write my writing. In days and gate would leave us an even devotion. <laughs> well, you'll have to correct me on that. <laughs> but the idea, isn't it, isn't it? If, uh, if only we truly saw our desperate need, we would be calling out desperately, wouldn't we, to the Lord for his intervention for us. Now, I'm sure there's, there's, the, uh, there's the germ of that, isn't there, in our meetings together. Uh, let, let's pray that, that the Lord will indeed meet with us and answer us and come uh, into our into our meetings. Take those up who preach the word of God and give them that anointing that will bring the word with power into men's consciences. Uh, so let's come to prayer, shall we?